All right, hey guys, how you doing? This is Jay Hughes, and uh, I'm excited to, to speak with Alan Dib today. And uh, Alan's a serial entrepreneur. He is a self-confessed, rebellious marketer, technology expert, and he is the number one best-selling author of the book called The One-Page Marketing Plan. And um, and I've invited him to come on today and speak to him. And I'm uh, super excited about that. He, Alan, comes with a, a ton of. Uh, experience and credentials. He started and grown and successfully exited multiple businesses in the, in a lot of different industries. Alan grew his current business from startup um, to four years later, it was named uh, in the Business Review Weekly as one of Australia's fastest growing companies. And again, his latest book, The One Page Marketing Plan, has sold over 150,000 copies. And Alan, if I'm if I've got this right, it's uh, it's still the number one best la- number one best seller on Amazon since 2016. Is that correct? Yeah, it's been um, it floats somewhere between number one and number three or number four, depending on who who's launching a book that week. But it's right. been consistently right. in the in the top few in the marketing category for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, hey, Alan, thanks again for being on today. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's a pleasure, Jay. Wonderful to be on. All right. So hey, um, uh, it was interesting. You, this is the first time you and I have actually talked. We've communicated a little bit in email, but mm-hmm. um, we like. I think you had reached out um, regarding one of the other interviews I had done, but I had I had already purchased a copy of your book, um, that one page marketing plan, because it's so interesting. At least it's interesting to me. Um, for like <laughs> the last six eight years, I've developed um, a lot of little tools for my clients and even for myself. And, and I call them one page tools. And so, yeah. man, when I saw, when I saw the copy of your book, one page marketing plan, uh, <laughs> cause I have a one page business planning tool. I was like, dang, like I, I've got to get it. And, uh, and unsurprisingly, like it, it is, it's excellent. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. So, but I am, I'm, I'm curious, like for you, what were some of your thoughts or motivations around a one page marketing plan, both the tool and writing your book? Like, what were you trying to accomplish? Yeah, look, long before it was a book, it was a tool. So um, I've been co- coaching uh, small business clients for a few years now. Um, and one of the things that I really wanted them to do early on was put together a marketing plan. And many of them felt that it was too difficult, too time consuming, too hard, too expensive. And for the most part, they were often right. You know, traditionally putting together that kind of marketing sure. plan has been difficult and, and all of those things. Um, and so I created a tool called the one page marketing plan. It was a tool that, uh, you know, I wanted my clients to, to go through and that dramatically incre- increased the compliance rate, uh, of people putting together a plan and, and putting all of that together. So, so really, um, it, like I said, it was a tool long before it was a book. And then, you know, it worked so well for my clients. I thought I've got to get it out to a wider audience. And I, um, I put down the process and the tool in book form. And uh, it's been a tremendous success ever since. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm curious, like, um, do you have a, a certain uh, segment of the population uh, from a business standpoint that you, you typically coach with? Like, like you know, I'm, I'm deep in the mortgage and real estate industry. That's kind of my, that's my niche. But like, is there a, a, a specific niche for you or is it, has it been pretty broad with the, uh, with the public? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have, I don't have a vertical niche, but I, I do have a horizontal niche. So w- what that means is I work with people across all industries, but I'm very specific in who I work with. I work with business owners who are generally doing, you know, 200,000 revenue up to maybe 10 million in revenue. And we work uh, very much on strategic and tactical marketing implementation. So, so I do have a horizontal niche, um, but I don't work in particular verticals, but I tend to work with people who are, you know, in technology, in financial services, in construction. So usually clients who have a pretty high transaction value because, you know, it's a lot easier to get a, uh, a return on investment when you've got a high transaction value than if you're selling, you know, twenty dollar widgets. Um, but you yeah. know, not that you can, not, it's not that you can't, but um, you know, it just takes uh, longer and it's, it's a bit harder. Yeah. Well, and actually, that's a <clears throat> it's one of the reasons we're talking today. It's a, it's a perfect fit with with the folks that I um, you know market to and and serve because well, two things. One, I mean, with with uh, loan officers and real estate agents, they both both essentially function uh, like a self-employed business owner, at least certainly the best of the best. Oh. Do. Um, you know, everything's everything is 100% commission. 
and there's a lot of autonomy. I mean, there's, there's definitely structure that they have to follow inside of, of their company, but there's a lot, you know, again, the best of the best really function as their own, you know, as the head of their own team. And, wow. um, and they're doing a lot of business, you know, it's simply not a $20 widget. There's a lot of, there's a lot of commissions online with each transaction. So I really, like I said, when I kind of dove into your book, I was like, this is a really, really good match, uh, for, you know, again, for both loan officers, real estate agents, and then the, the managers and executives, uh, that, you know, that oversee those, you know, those two groups. Yeah. So, um, Fantastic. yeah. So let me ask you, let me ask you this. There was a section in your book where, um, you, you start talking about this, the difference between marketing and then these other terms, right? So like uh-huh. advertising and promotion and sales and uh-huh. PR. Uh-huh. And I love that because you, you kind of help um, drive this point, make the distinction about, well, if we're talking about one page marketing plan, like what, what are we actually talking about? So I wondered if you would just take a minute and kind of expand on that um, for us right here. I think that'd be really helpful. Yeah, look, because, I mean, if you ask someone what marketing is, I mean, you get all sorts of responses back. And, you know, some people will say, hey, it's advertising. Some say it's promotion. Some say it's publicity and all of that. Some say it's leading up to a sale and all of that. And, you know, all of those are good answers, but they're only partial answers. And so, to me, uh, marketing is really encompassing all of those things and planning those things out. So, it's essentially the strategy you use for getting your ideal target market to know you, like you, and trust you enough to become a customer. So that's that's really what marketing is. And it encompasses all of those things. It encompasses advertising, it encompasses promotion, publicity, public relations, all of those sorts of things. It's the planning out of all of those things. And when all of those things converge, that's essentially marketing or, or effective marketing. Right, which, um you know, I, I would say certainly for for my audience, and and I would I assume for uh, yours as well. The, you know that um, there's so the the issue tends to be, or a lot of times that people get excited about marketing, get excited about advertising, which you know again they would use, and even I've done that in the past. You know, use those terms interchangeably, but there's not a whole lot like of of the actual planning and strategy mm-hmm. in place that mm-hmm. you mentioned. Uh, mm-hmm. You see a lot of times it's just like it's almost, you know, you take dollars, throw it against the wall, hope that it sticks, and um, that doesn't work very exactly. well. And in this, in, in the environment right now, it really doesn't work. So um, mm. would you agree with that? I mean, is that kind of what you I, I what would you absolutely agree with that. Lot? Yeah, so, so like, like I, I recently moved into a new house, which I was building for the last uh, couple of years. And, you know, interestingly, the first six months were spent with the architect, with the council, working out the planning and all of that. We didn't just start laying bricks or digging a foundation and all of that because um, that would have ended up in, in disaster. I mean, even even <laughs> planned, it didn't go all go <laughs> very smoothly. But anyway, um, but, but still, um, really, um, without a plan, I mean, you're flying blind. It's kind of like, you know, if you stepped onto a plane and you overheard the pilot speaking and the pilot said, ah, look, don't, don't worry about the flight plan. We know how to get there. You know, uh, you'd, you'd freak right. out and you'd leave. Right. <laughs> so, but m- many people run their business and especially the most important part of their business, which is the client acquisition without any kind of plan. And, you know, is it any yeah. wonder then that we're surprised that so many businesses fail? No, I mean, that's exactly right. And and I think to your point that you started out with, like, <clears throat> the aversion to some of that up front is, it seems, uh, could could seem overwhelming to people or complex um, with the advent now of, of uh, beyond just traditional marketing and advertising, you have, you know, everything that's done social and electronic, all the technology. And so it is complex. And so, you know, I know for, for a lot of people I've talked to, it's like they just they don't know exactly what to do. They don't have the money to hire uh, a consultant and help them or a coach to help them. And so, constant, but they know they need to be doing something. And so, mm. and it's uh, it's throwing that money up and just kind of hoping and and you know hope's not a great strategy. And we we know that. So, um, well, let me ask you this. So this this part of your book again, it was early in your book, but it was really the part kind of pulled me in because this is this is a topic that I'm passionate about for sure. So you spend time talking about the importance of of not just knowing who your target audience is, but but like proactively selecting one, choosing one. So uh, wow. selecting, you know, a niche. And so <clears throat> I can tell you right now, for those that are listening, 
uh, the loan officers and real estate agents, they tend to get nervous about this concept of, of a niche and selecting a niche, a niche and choosing one. And, and I know you understand why. I mean, there's usually what it is, there's a fear, there's a fear that <clears throat> as a loan officer, if I'm speaking to a, a really narrowly defined audience, that it's going to actually decrease, you know, the opportunities I'm going to have for sales as opposed to what's, what's actually true, which is um, it, it actually, because the message can be so targeted, it resonates mm -hmm. with people. So um, I want to, I want to, I'll stop there. Why don't you share with the audience, like, what do you see as some of the most important things regarding, you know, a loan officer or real estate agent really selecting and then owning that niche? Yeah, no, that's a great point. You know, a lot of business owners, they fear that um, they're going to be missing out on the large, uh, large market. And the, you know, the, the the feeling is that you want to cast your net wide. You don't want to exclude anyone, right? right? So, and, you know, that, that's totally understandable and it feels logical. But um, here's the thing. Um, there's, there's two things at play. No, number one is specialists get paid more, right? So when you go mm -hmm. to visit someone who's a specialist, special, you, you don't... You don't argue about price. You don't uh, haggle and all of those sorts of things. Right. You, you do that when that when it, when the when it, you're dealing with a commodity. But when you're going to a specialist, a specialist is respected. A specialist gets paid a lot. A specialist gets sought out. And so, like recently, I had the experience where uh, actually not I had the experience, but my wife had the experience where she injured her knee and. Guess what she types into Google? She types in knee specialist and then the area that we, we live in, right? She didn't just type in Absolutely. general doctor that just, just does everything, right? So, um, so that's one thing. Specialists are sought out. Specialists are paid more. So that's one reason. The other thing is I'm not saying that you can't take other, uh, other businesses outside uh, of your niche. But what I'm talking about is when we're using your scarce advertising dollars, um, we want to be... Uh, very, very focused because it's likely you don't have the time or the budget to do big mass marketing campaigns. Like if you had millions of dollars right. and years to get a result, okay, well, maybe we can talk about a mass marketing campaign and very large companies can afford that. But when you're working on a smaller budget, you need to be hyper-targeted and, and you know shoot all of your arrows at that one target. And so right. that's really what we're talking about. And that, that doesn't mean if somebody outside of your niche comes to you and says, hey, I want to do business, that you, you have to say no. You can say no if you want to, but um, we're talking about when you're focusing your uh, scarce marketing budget, how are you going to, to do that? So rather than being very general yeah. and having a, a laundry list of all the things that you do, being very, very hyper-focused and targeted as to who do, you, who do you want to attract? No, I think it's, a, I mean, that is... Uh, that's lockstep with my philosophy, and I think you articulated that so, so well. It's kind of like what um, what Dan Kennedy said a long time ago as far as, like, you want to give each dollar a job. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if you are – if you're going really, really broad, like, um, you can't – you know, a loan officer, real estate agent, like, they can't advertise like McDonald's or Coca-Cola um, or Apple. Um, it's exactly. branding – doesn't work and so but again there's that fear that like i'll use an example of a loan officer where you know they want to the most typical kind of value proposition is i can do a loan for anyone anytime anywhere with any loan program that's available and um and then maybe they try to differentiate themselves with saying like i've been in the business for 20 years but but mm. it just gets yeah. lost but it's not compelling whatsoever as opposed to going really really targeted you go narrow you say, I'm going to focus on first time home buyers and I'm an expert. And then to your point, I mean, experts are sought out. It brings instant credibility. And, uh. and also what I have found anyway is um, not only do you not have to turn down business outside of your niche, but like because you're an expert, it opens the door to, um, you know, let's say if a, uh, if a loan officer <clears throat> is in their first time home buyer specialist and that message resonates with a realtor who's going to refer them business. Well, as soon as that first transaction goes through and you have an opportunity to serve that real estate agent, well, he or she, like, I love this guy. I mean, this guy does a great job. Or I love this gal. Mm. So, you know, can you do an FHA transaction? Can you do, you know, I've got a, you know, I've got a jumbo loan. And so the opportunities exist to, to definitely go out beyond your niche. But when you're going to use marketing dollars, like you said, it's got to be targeted. I, I, I think that's, 
that's probably uh, that'd be the, one of the biggest takeaways I would think for people that are listening today. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, it it look it, it it's counterintuitive because, like I said, it feels right to cast your net wide and you have the widest possible audience. But you, you it you know, like many many things that um, you don't expect in life, it's it's counterintuitive. And you know, try it, test it out. You know, um, this yeah. is something that that you, you'll you'll see from from personal experience. Yeah, good point. That's actually that's a really good point. Um, Okay, so another question for you. What would you say is one, you know, one key or one secret that that is critical, crucial to understand in order to successfully complete a marketing plan? Now, well, granted, we're going to say, you know, up front, we, we should be using your plan, right? The one-page marketing mm-hmm. plan, that's, that's for sure. But any other tips or thoughts on, on what a loan officer or real estate agent should be thinking about, they've got to make sure and have in mind where they're going to work through your tool. Look, here's the thing um, that you you need to have a real mindset shift. So, and you know, this was a turning point for me in my first business um, when a mentor said to me, and my first business was in IT. Um, he said, "You're not in the IT business. You're in the business of marketing IT services, right?" And to me, that was a complete mindset shift because, um, you know, I thought, hey. Uh, if I'm really good at IT, you know, people are going to tell other people and, you know, the business is just going to explode on, on its own. But, you know, my mentor told me that the best marketer wins every time. And I can tell you from personal experience, I've actually uh, felt that. And I'm sure a lot of the people listening mm. um, would know people who are technically not as good as they are, but they're making a lot more money because um, they they know something that they don't like. Like they know how to market themselves Absolutely. better. Absolutely. <laughs> they might not be nowhere near as good as a loan officer as as you are, but they're 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 doing better because they know how to get themselves out there and they know how to get a message out. No, I think that's uh, that's a hard, <laughs> that was the example I was going to use. If, um, and but I think that's exactly right because it does it happens all the time. There's you know, you've got an office full of a hundred people and. They're looking at the you know the top two or three producers, thinking I'm like technically I'm I'm better than them. I'm better mm. with the borrower. I'm better with the process, right? Um, but yeah. I think you're exactly right. It it tends to be the people that that um, know how to um, generate the business, create the leads, you know, shake hands and kiss babies, uh, put their advertising and marketing dollars to use. Um, that that trumps because you're you're driving the traffic. You get people. You get in front of people. And um, you may not be as good, but those are the, those tend to be the people that are the top producers. So, yeah, I think that's I think that's dead on. Well, hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time, so really appreciate you being out uh, or being on here with me today. Is there any any last uh, comments you want to leave with with the loan officers and and real estate agents listening that are that are thinking, man, like I really I know I need to complete a plan. I haven't done that. Uh, any last thoughts for them? Yeah. So so so. Get, get on towards completing a plan, but more than the plan, it's all about execution, you know, because y- you can have all the knowledge in the world, and if you don't implement that in your business, then you might as well have not, not bothered. I mean, knowing and not doing is the same as not knowing at, at the end of the day in terms of results. So right. really get get implementing, become a marketer of loan services, become a marketer of real estate services, have that mindset shift and really uh, move forward with implementing your marketing and, and executing on, on what you know, because at the end of the day, uh, you don't necessarily need more ideas. You just need to implement some of the ideas that you've got right now and start with that plan and then start with implementing that plan. Mm. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, Alan, seriously, thank you for being on today. I think what you've shared, I can guarantee you uh, that this is going to go a long way for people. And so thank you very much for being on today. That's a pleasure. Pleasure. Wonderful being on, Jay. All right. So, hey, if you, um, I would encourage you, if you don't have it already, go out and get the, uh, it's called the One Page Marketing Plan by Alan Did. You can pick that up on, on Amazon or anywhere else and, and dive in. He's got a lot of free resources and tools that accompany the book that you can download. And uh, we'll definitely, on this uh, post that you're 
listening to the podcast from, we will uh, we'll put links on there on how to both pick up the book and some of the other free tools that Alan gives away. So pick that up and, uh, and then drop me an email. Let me know. What did you think? What did you get out of it? All right, guys. Well, again, this is Jay with Press On, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.